Now that we have a couple of insert effects on this track, it'd be nice to add some movement to some of these parameters so that the sound has a bit more variation and character to it. Let's go ahead and play this again. And initially we were playing with the mix parameter on the distortion device to blend the wet signal with the dry signal. But before the distortion device, this is no longer dry. This is being processed by the filter before it hits the distortion device. So let's hear this completely dry with no distortion. All right, and that's how it sounds with just the filter. Now I think what could be cool is maybe making it so that this mix parameter gradually turns up and down in some sort of rhythmic way. So we can accomplish that very easily by utilizing some of the new devices in Bitwig 2, which are modulators. If we look over here, the bottom left-hand corner of this device, we have a circle with an arrow. And if I click on this, this is gonna show me the different modulator slots. This allows me to add something here that will modulate, that will change these parameters. Some of them will change them cyclically. Some of them will react to the note input. Some of them react to different things. <laughs> you have a lot of different options. So I'm gonna hit my plus button here. And now this brings up the pop-up browser and shows me all the modulators that are available to me. I think what I'd like to do, like I said, I wanna add some rhythmic movement to this mix parameter. And if I wanna do something that's rhythmic and something that's also cyclical, that repeats, an LFO, a low frequency oscillator, is a really good choice. Now this distortion device doesn't have a low frequency oscillator, but in my modulators, I have a few different LFOs to choose from. The beat LFO, I think will be a good choice. It's very simple, and again, it's gonna be rhythmic, so this fits my criteria. I've selected that, I'm gonna hit OK. And now I can see this is my beat LFO, and I see a waveform that's being generated, and it just repeats and goes on indefinitely. An LFO generates a waveform that just cycles through and cycles through and cycles through. And we can assign this to a parameter, and that parameter's value will follow the shape of our LFO. If I click this triangle here, now I can see the settings for this LFO. And I'll tweak this a little bit later, but for now, this will be fine. Now, if I want to assign this modulator to a parameter, I have to click on this arrow here. And before I do that, let me go ahead and play the baseline again. So once I click on this arrow, we're gonna notice the knobs, all the different parameters inside of this device are gonna turn the same color as this arrow. So this means that all of these can respond, can be modulated by this LFO. I want to affect the mix parameter. So the way that this works, we see right now this orange line is telling us that's the current value of the mix parameter. If I click on this, now we can see as I'm holding, it says mix plus zero. So this is not being modulated at all yet. I'm gonna drag down as I'm holding this knob. And now you can see there's a little blue line that's going up rhythmically, and that's following the waveform that's being generated by the beat LFO. All right, so we can see that's being modulated. We can hear the change. I'm gonna go ahead and stop assigning this, so I'll press this again. Okay. Now this is a little bit faster than what I wanted, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit this arrow again. And I can change the speed of this LFO with this knob here. So I'm gonna reduce this so it's as slow as possible. Let's go ahead and move over here so we can see what's happening. So we can see now the peaks and the valleys of this triangle waveform, they're much further apart. And we can also hear and see that the mix parameter is following suit. It's reacting much more slowly. It's pretty cool, I'm digging that. Now let's try another modulator that will work a little bit differently. We have our filter over here and the modulator slots were already open when I dragged this in. I'll hit my plus button. And instead of using a LFO that's gonna react in a cyclical way, I wanna get something that will respond to the notes that are currently playing. So I think a good choice might be the envelope follower, which is right here. So I'm gonna select that and press okay. And right now we see, if we look in this display, there is a line here that is completely flat. And we see this, this looks almost like the same icon that we saw for the samples in the browser. So this is waiting for audio. 
Once it hears some audio, this line is basically gonna follow the volume envelope of the audio being fed into this device. So we can see now every time a note plays, the initial volume of the beginning of the note is louder than the rest of it. We can tell by looking down at this volume meter after the polysynth, the attack of the notes, the beginning of the notes are much louder and the envelope follower is reacting accordingly. Every time a note is played, the envelope is a little bit higher. Now if I expand this, here we can see different settings for the envelope follower. If I want this to react more quickly to the peaks in the audio, I can reduce the attack time here. So now the beginning of the envelope, when the volume spikes happen, we can see it's jumping up more quickly. And I think that's fine for now. Let me go ahead and close this. So now I want to assign this to something. And I think what might be interesting is, uh, let's see. Yeah, the filter frequency is the obvious choice here, I think. So I'm gonna click on this so I can assign my envelope follower to the filter frequency. And I think maybe every time the beginning of the note plays, maybe the filter frequency should increase just a bit. So I'm gonna click, hold here. So it's pretty subtle. While this is still active, I can tweak this. That's pretty interesting, I like that. So let me click here again so that I don't accidentally assign this to other parameters I don't mean to. Now let me click here. Now if you notice, this modulator is nestled inside of the filter. Now if we look in the display, we see the filter frequency here, the default setting, but we can also see how much is being modulated by that blue dot. If we reduce the release time, let's see what happens with our envelope. So now when we have the volume spike, we see the filter is increasing very quickly, but now it's reacting to every minuscule volume change instead of having a more gradual kind of smooth release. I think I liked it where it was at before. So the modulators are extremely powerful, very flexible, and more importantly, we can have an unlimited number of modulators for every single device that we bring into Bitwig.